Hello, hello everyone. Let me know if uh, my audio or my video is not showing up. Morning or evening for most of you in the US. Um, if you want to ask a question, please make sure you add a whole bunch of emojis next to your question on the right hand side in the stream, in the chat. There's a 20 second delay in the stream, so please be aware that I'm not ignoring some questions. There is a delay and also if there's questions I can't answer or questions that are stupid, silly, um, I, and stuff I don't know too much about as well. So there's no point in me just saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So I'll try and skim questions. And if there's ones that aren't really for me, or I have nothing to say, then, um, but bear in mind, there's a 20 second delay. Hey everyone, couple of uh, regular faces. Uh, as usual, I wanted to discuss the last couple of videos that were kind of related around the same thing. Uh, and, and that is when you're with someone and uh, they just kind of feels like you're, ha you're having a relationship. You're trying to love someone behind glass. It's like you're at the zoo and you're tapping on the glass and you're looking at the monkeys. And uh, my most recent one, um, asking her questions, you know, how long did her relationships last? Why did they end? Uh, listen, listen to those things. Guys don't sort of, not that they don't read between the lines. A lot of times they don't want to, they, they don't want to hear anything uh, as a negative. It's like a positivity machine. It's like, unless it's yes, yes, yes. It's like, la, 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 la. <laughs> uh, but I always kind of say this stuff is important, not to become neurotic about it but because it's your life. Okay, the video and audio is out of sync. Okay. Really? Okay. Can someone else let me know if the video and audio is out of sync as well? There we go. Just adjusted it a little bit. I thought it was pretty good. Unless someone's very, very particular to the millisecond. So yeah, please let me know if it's out of sync to the point where it's irritating. Oh, there we go. Looks fine to me. Good. Okay. I'll keep it going. Um... Yeah, I, I think I always got to the, not got to the point, but every time I, because I, when I've had good times in relationships, <laughs> about 15 milliseconds. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, how's that? People with a good eye, <clears throat> bear in mind, there's a stream difference, so it might be like a touch different depending on where you are in the world, but I want to get it relatively good. Good now, better now. quasi Mandias says 15 milliseconds. Okay, I'll just leave it. See, I got off track. Um, I don't like this, um, this color profile. Actually, I was actually thinking of, um, doing my stream in black and white one day, but I don't know whether people would really like it just as a change. Alright, alright, alright. Um, 
Yeah, I don't want to go any lower. This is fine. Yeah, for more, for me, it's uh, always been. I one of the things that from a young age is being a curious child and you know asking why why should i so i can't just accept something that doesn't work that's that's odd that objectively when you talk to everyone they say yeah that's wrong that's bad but then when you're in it they say all of a sudden they flip and say well that's fine that's just the way it is it's like well when i wasn't in a relationship you said yeah that's bad behavior but in a relationship we give them a pass. And I always thought that was really ridiculous because I thought a, a caring relationship is one where those principles are adhered to the best or tried to at least or respected the most. So what annoys me, and I think I've, I was mentioning, mentioning this thing to a couple of friends I was talking about, uh, yeah, uh, talking to... Um, yesterday or the day before day before and uh we we're talking about past and relationships and um i i kind of said what i cannot overlook is that when my partner the person that's supposed to love and care for me and me them when i can go in, out into the street and a complete stranger there is a 90% chance I go up to a complete st stranger and they are more civil and polite and kind to me than the person that's the central uh, person in my life that is supposed to be the person I can count on and trust. I cannot excuse that and say, well, it's just the way women are. Sorry, but um, I, I can't. All these things that people say, well, that's just the way it is. For me, it's 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 kind of lazy because if it was if it was a stranger in the street, everyone would say, well, ignore them, screw them, walk away from them. They're acting bad. But the person that should be the laziest, and uh, you know, if they have values that they proudly get on a podium for and they speak highly about you know they beat their chest about but then they don't um they don't act in that way for me it's really hypocritical it's it's like someone yelling at you to get fit and eat healthy while they're on the couch eating box after box of donuts and turning into a couch walrus yeah you you, you it's it's just insulting Especially if you know objectively you are trying and you're treating them well and people around you can objectively say like, you know, she's this and that. If people around you confirm what you already feel, you think, oh, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just irritated. Maybe it's just a girl thing, you know. It's one of these things you have to get used to. Girl things that you need to get used to are things like she's romantic. She likes movies that you don't. She's got interests that you don't. Uh, so women have a lot of interests that don't coincide with men, fine. But in terms of just normal, civil, uh, human uh, courtesy and kindness, it's just kind of um, weird to me. Especially if you're in the relationship, right? Do you value it? Act like you do. Don't put all the responsibility on them. That's why I always talk about this tennis match that needs to go on. It's a give and take. It's a, it's a cycle. It's a loop. That it's a circuit that cannot be. You can't expect them to do the loop. It needs to be kind of a dance. Uh, I, men I mentioned in the last uh, video, you can't tango with one person. You know, no matter how well you try to tango on your own, while the other person's stepping on your feet and kneeing you in the groin and um, just not caring, and you're dragging them around. But they say, "Yeah, I'm really into tangos." It's like. You like the idea of it, but you're not. You're showing me that you're not. You don't care. Can you please stop telling me you love to tango and you're great at tango and I'm trying to tango with you and you don't care and you're laughing at the, at the fact that you don't care. DataWiz72, thank you very much for the super chat donation. 
He says, uh, human, the woman you marry is not the woman you divorce. It blows the mind. I didn't even recognize her on an emotional level. Yeah, I've heard this. I think Norman Mailer was the one that said there are three stages of knowing a woman. The affair, the dating, if you will, because it's he's an, a writer from the mid uh, 20th century. He said that the three stages of knowing a woman, the affair, or if we like dating, the marriage, you know, the mother, that sort of environment. And this, he said the third stage by which you will never know a woman completely is the divorce. And while I've never been divorced, I have seen it in a couple of my partners, my exes, where after we broke up, they had a side of them that I'd never seen. If I had seen that, we wouldn't have even started dating at the beginning. I'm talking anger, selfishness, contempt for me to the point where I, I didn't do anything to deserve it, but they wanted to make me pay. I think somehow I always got the impression that I ruined their relationship because I didn't do what they wanted. So I ruined their dream, you know. They didn't kind of see the two-way street aspect of it. I really don't like this... this filter. Ah, look, I'm not going to change it now. So, yeah, that was what mainly the last couple of videos is to be very conscious and aware of engaging with a person because it's healthy to listen, right? Listening is a great skill to have. Not, not just that you're engaging uh in relating to the person you're with that's 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 um it's the way it should be we pretty much know that but you listen because you're being aware of information that's important to you your listening allows you to be non anesthetized if that's even a word allows you to be conscious about who you're engaging with particularly with a woman on a date because you can go there with the hopes and fantasy of, I want her to be something. But if you're listening and consciously paying attention to the warning signs that pop up, that I don't like that, and you're honest about that in your head when you hear it, while you're asking, when something pops up, she says in, in your mind, it's, uh, it's the stuff when we talk on our own with our friends, we say, I wouldn't date a girl like that, or if she had this attribute, or if she had this lifestyle, if you would or wouldn't date a, a single mother, or whatever your standards are that you know are right, you see them pop up with a female, and you excuse it, because she's hot, for no other reason. And then you start cowering and contracting in yourself, because you've excused one of your principles, so you feel shame. So why not do it again? You've already done it once. And she looks superficially hot and your friends are going to be clapping, you know. <laughs> Armand Ghost says, humans are vegetarians inherently undateable. Look, I've seen uh, and heard vegetarians say, you know, I'm vegetarian, but I'm not, a, not going to impose it on my partner. Uh, you've just got to, I think it's more to do with the personality than any hard and fast rules. There are some rules that are more objectively hard and fast like you know really extreme ones like um she's been divorced three times she's got seven kids and you're against it and she's got an awful temper it's kind of like why why are you doing it are you just the glutton for punishment so yeah that's why i say you've got to listen engage know how to speak and know how to listen so you've got to know how to do this dance between your mind your mouth and it coming back and hopefully they're doing the same thing but you're aware enough to know if a, a a conversation an engaged conversation in the present moment is being had and not you don't expect her to do it you drive it and she drives it too so she talks as well especially if you ask her questions like i mentioned you ask questions and you pay attention if she's avoiding it if she's using modern meme like uh, female, you know, Oprah style 
spirituality and <laughs> talking all over the place and not being direct with her answers and keep telling her and say, like, no, that's not what I ask. What I mean is yes or no, have you blah, blah, blah. So force her to give you the answers that you can see she's avoiding. And it's not to be cruel. Do it in a lighthearted way. Do it with a smile on your face. Do it, do it in a fun fashion. You know, you're on a date. You want to have fun too. But it's, it's, I keep saying it, it's your life. Not only like the dangers, like once you cross a certain line and she can have you for life legally and you can't ever get away and you can never be free for the rest of your life. You can't leave it, her and any part of the relationship in the rearview mirror, especially if she um, had a kid accidentally with you without your permission. It's your life. And if you don't care about your life, just to listen, ah, it's boring. That intellectual stuff, to listen and talk, ah, can't be bothered. For me, it's just about T and A and uh, spinning plates and banging as many women as I can. Then don't keep coming on these forums like William Wallace screaming about freedom and how women treat you. If you don't care by the way you act and your lack of of vocalization and honesty and pr being proud of what you want in a polite way with people on a date. If you don't really care, if you're a submissive little puppy, then later on, when she's not in front of you, you're a lion online. Like I said in the video, you don't care because as soon as a short skirt works, walks by, you become a five-year-old boy again. And you can say, well, you're shaming men. Like, I'm not. I'm shaming the boy. Like, when you're on your own with a girl, none of us are there to help you, man. You, you need to be your own uh, mentor in those moments. And the only way to do that is mentor yourself and be, and be interested enough to mentor yourself and interested enough in words and expressing yourself and knowing what to ask and being honest and just let, letting down the guards on a date and not caring if you impress her. Just be a nice person. Be the person you are with your friends. She has to like that person. Because if you have to then, to be with her, you formalize yourself like you're going to work in a suit. Then with your friends, you're someone else. You're the, more the real you with your friends and family. Then when she eventually hangs out with you and your friends, you feel awkward, like you've got to split yourself. Your friends are going to notice. Hey, human's acting differently. She's going to notice, hey, human's acting differently, and you're stuck in the middle, feeling even worse. Whatever you can do, stop feeling like that five-year-old boy. Yeah, real name's not given, Sid. I was used as a human doing today. I will say no to everyone trying to use me. See who stays and who leaves. Yeah, do it politely. Do it intelligently. Do it in a way that just says no and say, no, thank you. Let me think about it. But if people keep pushing you to do it their way on their schedule, where they don't give you time, learn the reflex of, hey, this is my life. It's not just your time. It's my time too. It's my choice too. I'm not something you use in your life. I'm someone you cooperate with. I'm someone you have a relationship with. I'm someone you have a conversation with. You don't talk to me. You don't talk down to me. You don't have me on a leash like a pet. Don't pretend to use words like love and relationship and the way you act is a selfish pig. Sorry, let me take my tea bag out of my cup. Green tea and peppermint in case anyone's interested. I don't feel like coffee this morning. Okay, remember if you want to ask a question guys, put a whole bunch of emojis next to your question in the stream on the right. And I'll try and get to it if it's a sensible question. Um, 
Wolf in beta clothes. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Fortis uh, King Sifu says, the word relationship in modern times has lost credibility. Yeah. And the thing is, I don't like words being kind of downgraded and watered down. The reason I like more the intelligence and standards of times gone by, the further back we go, um, you know, the good qualities, the objectively like excellent qualities, the, the qualities that made us aspire to be better people, the, the qualities that made us aspire to treat each other better, better, is because now words like relationship, it's just like, our oh, relationship's anything, man. Um, I hear re um, lately, whenever I've done videos or mentioned, um, I don't respect hookups on the level that people are trying, people are trying to push hookups to the same um, respectable term as you know relationships of the past and they because they're saying because that's how people relate today and they don't want to and they find the other way very boring and limiting and they feel like the train's passing them everyone's on the train of hooking up with hundreds of people every month rotating people and just having this they're at a party um and they're addicted to this stuff they're cycling through bodies all the time for them to stop they're watching everyone else at the party while they stand on the side for apparently no reason watching the party go by and their friends drift away. So they, they want to attach socially to be part of that. And especially to be with someone um, if everyone's hooking up short term and it seems like, you know, you're lame if you just stand still with one person. Uh, you, you seem like an old person uh, being intimate with someone. You know, the modern way, the young way to be with people is just like your Instagram feed. Just flick, flick, just keep going. Don't sit still to read a page, a paragraph, a book. Read memes, man. Time's too short. We've got to flick through. We've got to enjoy every second of the day. We can't sit still and smell the roses. Like you're missing out. It's like you just had one relationship. Dude, I had 20 this month. Like I'm better than you. Like the quantity Everyone's like trying to keep up with everyone's quantity. And it's not just the hustle culture of making money and uh, being an entrepreneur. And every, if, you know, if you're not a multimillionaire, you somehow failed in life. Everything is just frequency. Quantity has trumped quality today. No, uh, no more so than I've noticed in, in relationships and people don't want to admit it. So they redefine what relationships are to legitimize their lack of discernment for quality. What do you think of my microphone sound? By the way, I changed my microphone this week again. I think it's good. I think it's natural. I think it's smooth. But once or twice before, it sounded good to my ears beforehand. But when I listened to the stream afterwards, it wasn't that good. It's a beautiful war. Thank you very much for this super chat donation. I appreciate it. He says, uh, hit the like guys and gals. Thanks human. Yeah. Hit the like, subscribe. Uh, it's free and it helps me out guys. Yeah. This year my channel has been frozen at a uh, 103 K for the whole year almost. Go figure. Once I passed 100,000, all of a sudden, the brakes got put on somehow. I don't know. Don't know. I'm still producing videos every week, but it's a bit um, suspicious. What can you do? Uh, that's why I say kind of at the end of my videos and here, like, like and... Um, see if you're still subscribed and hit the bell they want you engaged they don't want you passively like you should be able to click subscribe and then not worry about me and i'll pop up like you asked when i release a video and you don't have to maintain 
having to always check into my channel. You've got enough things to do in a day. But to them, they want people engaged and obsessed and looking at the at the screen because that way they're going to be looking at the ads too. So sorry, guys. It's just the nature of the beast. Look, I've got to play ball with them in certain ways in terms of thumbnails and headings and things you know i'd i'd rather not i'd rather write simple headings because it's a very simple video but if i don't write something that catches someone's eye related to the topic that's actually one of the hardest things at the end trying to make my titles and the headings relate to the video i'm trying to sensibly make but make them titillating uh, for the eyes when it comes on your screen, which can be annoying sometimes, especially when you're trying to do a real, um, a serious video that you know that other people could, that they want to have a discussion on, That's that I've gone through it, it's been hard, but you have to treat it like you're doing a an ad for corn chips. Like it has to be like wow and colors and you, you know what I mean. Ricky says, um, human, what do you think of the guy that his wife keeps cheating on him with uh, multiple guys and he keeps taking her back? <laughs> what do you think I think? I think it's, I think it's um, insane to do that. I feel sorry for the guy that he's so debilitated that he can't, that he's so kind or what happened to you at childhood, man? What did your parents not give you? What psychological push and pull abuse did they give you? Um, what are you trying to get that you didn't get um, back then? I don't know, all those questions. But um, yeah, I feel sorry for the guy. Because a lot of guys, look, when someone's like that, when they're so supplicating and they're so nice, I have much more sympathy for them than contempt. But there's a part of me that for their own good, I want them to toughen up. You know, I want to splash cold water on their face because I know that's what they need. The women aren't going to help them because whether it was your, your single mother or other women, they want to keep abusing you and keeping you as a five-year-old boy and abusing that five-year-old boy. You had no men around you, obviously, or no strong men to kind of tell you where your limits should be and how to stand up for yourself and where you don't let anyone, especially a woman, cross the line because people that you expect, like I said before, people you expect, like someone who is the central person in your life that you say you love above everyone else, like day to day, they treat you like a covert uh, abuser, like worse than anyone else, psychologically, especially. That is, uh, for me, is unforgivable. So that's why I can't stand that stuff where I'm talking from a guy's point of view, where women psychologically manipulate and abuse their partners, especially guys who are overly nice. Women hate it. And so because they have contempt for the nice guy they have and they want him to be nice, like you look at all these um, girl power chicks, right? They're so hyper anxious they're worried about, you know, R-A-P, you know, what culture. And so they're, they've got this hyper fear in their mind about what he potentially is. He's like Jekyll and Hyde. And so to keep him there, they overcompensate and really regress him to a scared five-year-old boy. But they hate it because... Women naturally like guys taller than them on average. They want, they love the feeling of being protected, being looked after. They like him leading. They like him in charge. They do everything in their power. So women are fighting themselves. So a, a lot of modern women are just mentally and they are imposing it and projecting it onto the guy, causing an awful relationship and then blaming him. Women are hating their own behavior, but won't admit it because they can't accept blame or guilt very easily. It doesn't come naturally to women. 
to say, I was wrong. My bad. When's the last time you heard a woman say that? Oh, my fault. I'll put my hand up. Yeah, that was my mistake. Sorry, that was me. Yeah, you're right. You know, uh, I was wrong. I apologize. I'm sorry. What's the cliche? Uh, I remember when I was growing up a few times I heard it. I heard it in movies, in romantic literature. You know, bad things happen to a woman. And Paul Elam did a, a video recently about when mama ain't happy, no one's happy. You know, happy wife, happy life. So it's a given. When she's not happy, she does not have to look at the cause of it because it, it, a lot of times it'll be her. Just make it happy. So I remember when I was, uh, a lot of times I heard, if you have an argument with your girlfriend, regardless of who was wrong, ring up, be the gentleman, be the guy and just apologize. Make everything right because she's really embarrassed and it's a guy's job to do that. So no matter who was wrong, if there's a tense moment, be the guy who smooths it over. Be the guy who rings up and extends the olive branch and says, sorry and babe, come on, let's not fight. And hopefully she goes, okay, sorry as well. But you have to be the first one. You have to fix it. You have to take the first step regardless. And I just cannot do that. I've tried once or twice and a lot of times it didn't even work. I felt even more embarrassed. I knew it wasn't my fault. They were completely to blame. But I thought, you know what? The actual issue itself is not worth it. Let me just extend the olive branch and go, look, sorry the way I acted. Um, the argument was done, whatever. Like, So I'm apologizing for my, my part. I'm expecting, okay, even though it wasn't really and my reaction. Remember, my reaction. I didn't initially treat her or say things badly. I reacted to her psychological abuse or lack of care. But I was not even big enough, in retrospect, stupid, to kind of say, look, because I'm more sensible, mature, and intelligent than you, I wasn't thinking that, but in retrospect, I think it's not worth it. Let me just apologize for my half. You might be too embarrassed or whatever. Fine, I'll say it first. Didn't come back. All of a sudden, it to her, it was like an admission. It was all my fault. Then all of a sudden, she piled on more anger and more blame. Aha, see, you admit it was all your fault. You're wrong. No. There's no point with those people, especially when... If you've been with a girl, you're with a girl, that you know that you're walking on eggshells, you can't expect that in those moments, especially when her defenses will be at their highest, if when it's normal, when you're just normal day to day, when she's tolerable, you still feel like you have to walk on eggshells and avoid certain subjects and not to talk certain ways because she's going to, you know, that dragon is going to be pricked up in her. When you're in a real argument when you're in a real tough spot you're there is no chance she's going to be the nice girl you hope she was when times were normal so forget it don't be don't apologize when it's not your fault be honest about it wasting your time i wasted so many years with women because um i was too accommodating and i think uh a lot of guys are Psychologically, especially, look at the way women treat each other in the school ground. Generally, uh, there's a lot of women who only have guy friends because they're tired of the backstabbing of women. Women can be pretty psychologically manipulative. I mean, I, I, I heard the reason they took narcissism out of the um, DSM in the US was that it's so common and so prevalent as a characteristic of how people operate on social media. So, the, the uh, you know, clinically, biologically being a narcissist is different, but narcissistic tendencies are so prevalent that it's normalized now. So, it's it's out. Like, it's, it's just called being selfish or... <laughs> it's not called narcissism. It's called your truth, you know? <laughs> ridiculous mm. what a slob anyway see I'm not perfect all right okay the mic sounds good people say Good. Boffin says it's real good. All right. 
That's a good endorsement. Boffin knows what sounds good. His microphone sounds good. It's a, it's a microphone that previously I didn't think much of because every review was very lackluster and they always sounded like they were underwhelmed and you could always get better microphones. I loved its predecessor, which was cheaper and it was a basic mic. And I didn't get this because all the reviews seem like it's just a waste of money. You can get much better mics for this price. But I got it for a good price and I love the design. And I thought because I loved its little brother, I'd get it. This is a Samsung Q9U and I absolutely love it. This is really great for my voice. This is the thing I forgot. Um, I've bought microphones that are rated really well, and for my voice, they're not good at all. Technically clear, but with my voice, no. This is beautiful, and there's different settings too. There's actually a radio voice setting. This is actually a flat setting, right? Here we go. Stop asking, <laughs> Stop asking me about um, microphones. I'll geek out. So for, in for instance, right? This is a flat voice, which works well on mine, and I've just boosted the highs. But I can go all radio, like this. So this is a real radio style on this microphone. So I think it's pretty good. Cuts out a lot of low end. So I think this is um, a lot better and smoother on my voice. But uh, this is my favorite microphone. Even though I've got more expensive ones, this, at the moment, I love it. I think this is gonna be my daily driver. The the funny thing is I bought, I ordered two in the last couple of months and because of, you know, what's going on in the world, I had no idea when they were going to get in, you know, a month, a couple of weeks, whatever. And just after my stream last week, I got delivery of one microphone and I thought, oh, cool, I'll use this on today's stream. And then the very next day I got this one and this one blew me away. I go, like, I have to use this one, um, but I'll use the other one. The other one I got was the um, the Neat Worker B, which is a beautiful microphone as well. My voice is really smooth on that, but not broadcast smooth, which is really nice for like podcast kind of things like now. I'm torn between two women, the yellow one or this smooth black one. Anyway, let's get back to why everyone's here. Uh, Tomb of um, Animus says, uh, quantity is a quality of its own. Never has it been more evident than today. Yeah, people value quantity now. That's 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 kind of like a bit of a mind flip. I'm tipping most of you uh, in the US. It's Saturday night for you guys. I think I I um. I catch up with a, a couple of people online and, and have chats. Usually Sunday mornings are the best. And that's usually Saturday nights for most people. Spec Ops, thank you very much for the super chat donation. <laughs> he says, here is some bribe money in case you want to take a walk. Thank you. Are you in Melbourne, Spec Ops? There's a couple of guys in Melbourne. Donna. Um, what's the other guy? Oh, I forget their names. It's hard for me to remember people's um, avatar names. Unless I'm constantly saying their names out loud. So if I read your name, I recognize you. But unless I actually speak it, it's hard for me to kind of, that, that's why I always, I know for me, the more I speak the words and ideas, they get embedded and they become reflexes. 
this is why I'm always encouraging people to not just write, to let it out and speak it. This connection from um, brain to paper is great. The personal um, intimate quality of knowing who you are, but then expressing it through your mouth, engaging with the rest of the world, especially, again, a lot of you guys who are here on dates, there is, there is so much liberation and um, proud control of your own life, being able to kind of finally afterwards say, you know, I'm, I'm really proud that I said what I said. I, you know, I felt myself being pulled away from like, don't say that, don't say that. But there's something in you saying, no, it's the right thing to say. It's the right thing to ask. It's the right be way to be and to act. Those moments are great. They kind of, they're like building blocks in getting you uh, to become the more whole you you wish you were when you're online kind of shaking your fist at the world and women. Then after a while, like w when you can actually do that, express it through your mouth and in public, like in real time with people, you're no longer shaking your fist at anything. You're just kind of proudly walking through life, saying yes and no, walking away when you want to, knowing where you belong and where you don't, knowing what's, uh, you know, what's for you and what's not. Quasimandai says, nice isn't a virtue unless it is a gift and you have, an, uh, you have a legitimate on-demand alternative. And you have a legitimate on-demand alternative. Yes. Sorry, I didn't read that properly. Yeah, trust your instincts, guys. Um, I've noticed this. It's kind of laughable. You start laughing. It's like, why don't I just say this? Why don't I just do this? It's so easy. It's just like flicking a light switch. And there's no, you're not being mean. You're not being rude. It's just do this, say this. They're mean. See you later. They're mean. You speak up. If they don't care about your boundaries, if they don't care how they're treating people, see you later. And they can kick and scream like a five-year-old in a cot all they want. But um, yeah, you've always got an alternative. Do not raise your nice standards above a person you're dealing with. Maybe a bit, but if you see it never it's reciprocated, if it's a one-way street, do not. Don't be one of these people on principle. I'm a nice person no matter what. You're a doormat no matter what. Because you're crossing your fingers that someone has, has so much empathy and sympathy that they will not treat you badly because of their own moral code. Look out there. Look online. You can see people's moral code. It's awful. So if you've got a passive moral code of I'm just super, super nice and I'm going, I'm going to out nice everybody, you'll see people will love me. No, they won't. Women detest weak, overly nice guys. And it doesn't mean you need to be, you know, um, like a cartoonish lion and not be your character. Uh, who you are really it's be discerning enough to to know where you fit who your people are who your kind of person is who matches you it's not fighting to be in clubs where you don't belong nor do you respect it's not fighting to be in a club with a girl or in a group of guys where you have to chant things religiously walk and quack like a duck just to feel like you've got you can belong somewhere the, the internet should show you how many different types of people there are. So if there's so many different type of people, that should ease your mind and say, I just need to find my tribe, my person, my woman, if you're so inclined to, you know, still date or. I can't believe that this morning tea hits the spot more than coffee. Tokyo Traveler says, uh, nothing makes a... Oh, thank you for the super chat donation, by the way. I appreciate it. He says, nothing makes a woman angrier and at the same time gets her respect more than telling her the word no. It's weird. Guys are logical where it's almost like saying it does not make logical sense, uh, the way women's reactions are to certain things and words and behaviors. So it's like telling a guy, when you get punched in the face, it's going to feel really great. You, 
these are these are some of the ways we've got to get used to like it's counterintuitive but i'm not saying you should do that to a woman i'm saying that when you act a certain way normally with everyone else they may be happy or they may be offended but for women it's exact opposite they counterintuitively react in the opposite way in the way they shouldn't especially in a romantic concept and it's in there's certain ways that i just can't accept it because i can't pretend to switch modes that way i can't play the game with with everything else in life especially if you're philosophically minded and you're stoically minded you know a is a one plus one is two you can't all of a sudden i hang on, now have to put on a different personality when i'm in this area reality is flipped on its head I, I, I can't blink, be in two places at once. Now, people will say I'm stupid because um, I just need to learn that. Otherwise, I can never be happy, especially long-term with a woman. But I, I, I can't. Oh, look, okay, I can't. I can, but I will never be um, content. I will never be comfortable. I will always need a lot of time away on my own, in my own space, and with my friends and family. And I need less time around my romantic upside down world partner. Because it's not a comfortable place. Life makes most sense to me when it makes sense. When it's based on reality. Uh, Dr. James Denton says, if you ended up dating that type of girl where you had to walk on eggshells, you deserve what you got. Yeah, look, I don't disagree with you. On one hand, like I don't like being mean to someone because I'm guessing most of us have been there. I've certainly been there where I've walked on eggshells. I liked the person at the start. They were nice. And then all of a sudden, when they realized you let your guard down, uh, you became committed to them. It was a relationship. All of a sudden, they relaxed. They weren't as warm. Um, you saw parts of their character. But I think as a guy, we've got this thing. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about something like a car. You spend all your time researching. And if you question everything, you finally pull the trigger and you buy that car. Anything after, outside the warranty, anything objectively that you bought the car going into with your eyes open, you know, you couldn't see any fault. Afterwards, the car reveals itself to be different. It's like, well, it's like, well, not our problem. You bought it. You have to deal with it. You, you had time to assess and ask every question. You had a probation period to return it or whatever it might be. That's past. And a, a woman's very aware of that probation period. She's aware where you're still, you're still uh, sensibly thinking, you know, yeah, I really like you, but you know, don't push it too far because it's early stages and I could say no. But once you've bought her, once you're in love, guys have this thing where we trust the honesty of what we, with all our heart, chose because it was great. Like, I bought my car because I researched, went over it with a fine tooth cone, and I bought it, and there's nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah, once you get it, there might be something like, ah, oh, you know what, I didn't pay attention to, but um, the floor space in the back isn't as big as I thought, but I, it's not a big factor. Or there's this part on the back bumper underneath that I thought uh, I didn't really look at it. It doesn't really make a difference to the overall um, reason why you bought the car. So they're just mild little like, oh, okay, I didn't notice that, but that was my own fault. But the things that I really needed in a car, like the, the you, you're going to be paying that much. And the reason why it matters to a guy is you're going to be paying like 40, 50, 60, 70, like a, a lot of money for a car. That's the life you spent earning that money. So you've got to make sure it's worthwhile. As Boffin mentioned in a, in a comment uh, regarding my last video, he says, uh, as I said, ask women why she broke up with her ex. He says, if all men were one-tenth as discerning in choosing a woman as they are about picking their next car or video game or large screen TV, the mating, the mating marketplace would be ru running some serious red tag specials on surplus women 
It's true. Look at all the other stuff you you you're very discerning about. I think we've just been sold that um, women are like PCs. They just break down. You need to reboot them. They're imperfect, but just that, that's the way they are because they're the only thing around. But the pros outweigh the cons. But with women, there's so little pros today. But they're selling them like the women of last century. Like women have always been the same, but the benefits today of being a woman compared to the downfalls and the dangers, especially legally. Like even if you take the, the, take the law out of it, right? Say she couldn't after you break up, take everything from you, take your kids, whatever, like be so unfair that you're just left in a basement starting from zero again in the last 20 years or something are taken from you. Imagine the Lord didn't get involved. Her attitude towards you, just that on its own. How nice they are. How th there's this uh, overall contempt for men out there. It's like you meet women sometimes on a day. It's like, well, what, what's this? What's this air of contempt for me? Like I haven't even talked to you. I've come here with a smile on my face, happily looking to get to know somebody, and you've come here with one hand on your sword, re ready to draw it out, and you know, cut my head off. Just their attitude. Then their attitude. They won't do anything for you. Um, everything has to be their way. They want you to lead. They won't let you lead. Um, they complain about everything. They won't do anything for themselves. They oh, it's just it's, it's, tell me, like when you you write in a column. I, I'm pretty sure this is what guys do, if not what girls should do too. Write in a column. What what are the benefits of this guy you're going out with, or this girl you're going out with? And then the benefits of staying single or staying on your own or not being with them. It's just common sense. Like if you value your life, you're going to be sensible regarding your life. And today, especially with women's contempt, largely for men, and they show no signs of saying sorry or turning things around. You've seen a little bit of it, I think, this last half year during what's happened in the world. But that's kind of like this def desperation of like, oh, we're alone now. We can't date. We're locked in. It's going to be a while before men don't have short memories, especially in this large context, like worldwide. You can have a short memory and excuse, okay, it was my ex and this next one, I'm optimistic. When every woman you see on TV, everywhere that you date, they're all the same now. They don't like you very much. You have to climb mountains to prove that you're just acceptable, just acceptable to start seeing me. And then after that, impress. I don't want 100%. I want 150%. But before I give you the privilege of giving me 150% of your time, and I'll give you virtually zero, before I even give you the privilege of giving me 150%, try climb that mountain to see if you can get in the entrance. Oh, I just think it's embarrassing. There's a reason why men and women are miserable today. Firstly, women, because men are downstream from women when it comes to dating and courting. As I think Dave Chappelle said, a, man's, uh, a woman's challenge in life is material. A man's challenge in life is a woman. That's why there's books, what, what do women want? How to understand these signs from a woman. Men are always trying to figure her out. She always um, kind of leads in the dance. And the men will try to be nice to accommodate her. But she will never give the steering wheel over. And uh, men just have to grab it now, with or without a woman. You don't want to travel in my car? Fine, sweetheart. Walk. Okay, guys, some of these questions are a bit silly.
some questions I don't know how to answer. Quasimandias says, you need a road K2. Roads are, most roads are very, very um, uh, sibilant on the high end. They're overly clear. They're not as smooth as I'd like. Um, not including their ribbon mic, which is nice, but it's not really made for voiceover. K2. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one, the K2. Is that the handheld mic? For now, I'm loving this one to death. Okay. Jake, uh, the degenerate, says, Human, have you ever met a woman apologize to you for something? I haven't. I have, but never a, um, never really a partner I had, a girlfriend, like a serious girlfriend. I've had other women, uh, generally in small ways, but nothing in a big way. Family members, yeah, sure. But I'm talking really what most people uh, on my channel are, talk, you know, are, are, are interested in. Uh, sort of more your old school, long-term type of relationship. You can't trust someone. This is the thing. Your, your instinct your common sense can't trust someone when they're objectively wrong and they can word salad their way out of it. Davina says, I thought it was a pro mic like a Shaw Audio Technica AKG Sennheiser. Well, this is why I like it. Um, I've, uh, I borrowed a, a Shure SM7B oh, earlier this year. I only had it for a day and I recorded what I do with each mic is I read a paragraph. I've got a letter from, uh, from William Faulkner, not to me, but a letter he wrote to, to one of his readers. And I read that paragraph with every microphone I get flat just to see the, um, the character of it. And I remember recording it with the Shure SM7B and I tuned this exactly to, to match the same, the same character of that. So this is really versatile. This is a really smooth mic, but you can make it, uh, you, just with one flick of the switch, you can make it sound really different. And um, so it's, it's a really great mic. So in a lot of ways, it's not as, it's not as good as a Shure SM7B, but for the money, this is like about, I think, half the price it's really good i love it but like i said I, I never was interested because all the reviews were really underwhelming but as has been the case a lot of times i i buy the mic that everyone thinks is great and it's rubbish either objectively or especially on my voice i knew someone would say that when i talked about my you know my yellow mic and my black mic someone once boffin says once you go black an amateur boxer he's made says uh when you realize they're superior to other species and the responsibility of the world is on them their instinct drove them to create god most prophets are men what do you think yeah i think most people feel better in life if they're led People like the idea of leading themselves in freedom, but most people actually don't like the don't like the practical aspect of actually being free and then facing the unknown and and being responsible for life. In the same way, everyone talks about getting fit, getting abs, being healthy, but people's impulses and lack of control they just they find it hard to discipline themselves. There is a discipline to living freely. That most people don't have. Most people are not disciplined for the good of their own lives. They are too lazy. They love the idea of it. 
maybe I was just thinking maybe that's the way why people like hookups. It's so easy. It's a lazy way of relating. It's it's harder to defer your gratification, be disciplined to go, no, I, I just want the best for me and I'm not expect, accepting anything other than that. I'm not having fun. I don't need fun. Like it takes up too much of your time. Do you know what I mean? So you people talk a lot about what's great, but they never never actually take steps to do it in their lives because everyone's great can be slightly different. My, the, my bars of excel, excellence are different because they're different things I, I value in my life. And so what I value in a female is probably very different to what someone else values in a female. But if you're conscious and you know they're righteous things to value, why not go for that to the exclusion of all the trash? It's like you're you're really thirsty for clear water, but you're, you know, oh, well, all there is is bin juice. I'll drink that. I'm getting sick. But, you know, yeah, I can't be bothered waiting for water. Uh, I just don't have any, I'm too impatient. How long have we been going for? Just over an hour. Marco, on uh, my my other video that was titled When She's Never Loved Anyone Back, you know, women who say they've never been in love, especially women in middle age, and they've had a lot of relationships, that's very telling. But that's that's pretty common today. People don't have relationships, they hook up, so I've been told. Uh, Mark says, I thought that the reason women slept around today was to practice to get good for the one. I thought that was funny. It's amazing the excuses people use to make it sound good, like, now, I'm, I'm looking for the one, but I'm practicing for him. So all, all this experience I'm getting with all these guys is, um, so I'm really great in bed with the guy that, you know, that prince that finally gets me. I'm doing it for him. Okay. Why can't we just be more honest? We'd have better conversations, I think. I think that's why people don't really care about having conversations. We instinctually know, know people are putting on masks. Political correct language and discussion is pretty much a uh, a mask. You're pressing play on. It's like it's like you're going to work. You know how you turn up to work in a suit and you talk a certain way. It's a watered down, sterilized, formal version of you in a tie. Now socially we do that because we're not allowed to talk any other way. Or you go on a date, you talk in the same way you do when you you're at work with your boss. In, at a meeting, uh, very rigid, aware of what you say, uh, knowing your place, maybe intimidated, shy, all that kind of stuff. You're not really free and relaxed, but you should be. You should be your relaxed social self the way you are with close people in your life. Uh, Steve Wise says, interesting title, this video, uh, the one I did about when she's never loved anyone back. Uh, he says, dealing with a, with a subject I was thinking about a few days ago, after 30 years of marriage and three grown children, my ex was lying in bed one night, crying, and said to me, no one has ever loved me. She came from a dysfunctional family, her own statement to me several times through the years, and was, never t and was married twice previous to our marriage. Whoa, okay. In spite of my love for her and the unquestioned love of her three children, Oh, man, <laughs> you are overly nice. Um, he continues, she made the previous statement, no one has ever loved me. Too many times an individual will project onto others what is actually true of him or herself. It's called spin or projection. Uh, point the finger at others and put them on the defensive about their behavior, their lack of love. When the truth is that that person is actually the one guilty of what they are blaming the others for. Yeah, I've, I've had this happen to me. It hit me yesterday that maybe she should have said, I have never loved anyone. Yeah. She said, no one has ever loved me. She should have said, I have never loved anyone. This is the thing I, I mentioned in the video. You actually get the most out of a good relationship and loving someone when you genuinely feel you want to and you want to say it and you want to experience it. You give it. You get it back. It's a loop. It's a conversation. It's a cycle. 
Women today sit there with their arms crossed saying, love me, love me, love me. But you don't actually experience it unless you, unless you give something first. Unless you give love, you won't get it. Yes, there's a risk, but you have to do it as sensibly as you can. Like I say, guys, look, if, you're, if, you're, if you honestly want companionship, whatever way you want it, you want to get married, you want to have kids, you don't, whatever. But my channel's not really a hookup channel. My channel's more for if you do want to have relationships that are more the way they've always been um, prior to the last couple of generations, prior to the internet, then you have to be honest about it. You, you know, you can't just say to someone, love me. You've got to give it. In the same way, you can't, you can't dance if you don't participate in the dance. A person can't drag you around the dance floor and, talk, and call it a tango. Um, lat QCD 92 on the video when she's never loved anyone back. He says the words I've never been loved translation is I've made bad choices, but rather than accepting what I've done and the choices I've made, I want to absolve myself of responsibility by, re by pretending nothing that's come before actually counts as love. Yeah, they want to be pure. Sure, I've been on Tinder for the last decade. But technically, because I haven't found the one, I consider myself a V-I-R-G-I-N. That's my truth, you know? Oh, I thought when you asked me how many men I've been with, I thought you meant like in love, like I haven't been with anyone. I'm pure. And I'm offended that you actually consider or judge me on just these men I had fun with. That's just fun. For, for me, it's amazing, like sometimes, um, you know, when you talk to women about the way they dress sometimes, like they, when they're very produ provocative, like their breasts are hanging out, short skirt, where you can barely, you know, almost see their panties. And to them, it's like, oh, just kind of cute, sexy, you know, it's like, do you know that the word S-E-X is in that, you're trying to say it's cute in a flowery way, in a romantic way? It's not. Don't pretend... You like the effect it gets you. You get attention. But you, and this is another reason why women don't really care about a man's perspective. They do not care. They don't want to look at how a man sees them. They're offended. No, I don't want you to see me like that. I don't want you to just see me with the eyes of S-E-X. I want you to see me in an innocent little girl way, even though I'm acting and dressing like a streetwalker. Like they can turn things in their heads and phrase things that they believe it, and they'll shame you into believing it. Can you live with yourself, though? Connor Smiley says, I've never told a woman I love her. I really want to, and I've been extremely close with enough women, but I've never, <clears throat> but I've never been in the same place long enough to take things to the next level. I think some people see love as infatuation and rush into relationships. I'm not sure what love is. At least you're thinking about it. But the moment I'd rather but the moment I'd rather be with her than my best buddies, I'll probably say those three words, but I'll be damned if I can from a connection deeper than between my closest friends and I. Complete respect, man, Connor. Um I understand that. Like I, I said it too often when I was in my 20s because it was expected. I acted like I was expected to. I said the words I was expected to say. But um, you're acting like someone else and you're not really comfortable. It's a difference between wanting to say it because you feel like it. And I'll, I'll freely admit with my last relationship, I never said it to my partner. I was with her for two years and I came close a couple of times. But she kept pulling me away from opening that door and wanting to say it to her. You know, she'd be nice one day or one week and be like, she's great. I, I real, This was a landmark. This is a great moment. Like in our relationship this week, we spent great time together. And I, I felt like I can see myself saying it in the near future. If things keep going like this, I can see myself easily saying it to her. She's a great person. That was just the moment. So I needed that to be consistent. I needed her to show me who she was over the long term. I wanted to say it. 
but I'm not going to force myself to say it. In the same way, when a woman says, I love you, you don't just say, I love you too, especially the first time to be polite. Say it when you mean it. Um, each of you has to earn it. You don't trust me. Earn it. Earn my trust. Like, why do I have to give it to you? This isn't a bouquet of flowers that you just demand. You should trust me because you said you're committed to me. Yeah, I'm committed to you, but trust is earned. Is, doesn't it feel better when the person says and does things without coercion, you told them, no pressure, and they want to do it for you? Then you know it's real. But again, women can fool themselves into believing their own BS. How many women do you, you hear, they nag their boyfriends while they're going out with them? When are we getting married? When are we getting married? Where's this relationship going? When are we moving in together? When are we doing this? She nags all the time and saying, if we don't, uh, then I'm gone. You better do it. Like, And there's the complaining and complaining, complaining. When are we getting married? All of a sudden, he saves up, he gets a ring, gets on one knee, and the woman's like, oh my God, I had no idea. Like, I f like, that is so annoying to me. You have been pushing me to do this or you threaten to leave and now you sit there insulting me, pretending you had no idea. It was a surprise. Look, girls, he just came out and told me he wants to marry me. I had no idea. I'm so great that he just had, his heart was so, you know, enamored with me that he just wanted to. I, no one forced him. You did. God, I can't stand the lying, especially on really important things. Lie about garbage, you know. Someone, I don't know, um, but you, you're polite to, to a stranger for no, like, how are you going? Oh, nice, or whatever, or someone cooks you a meal. Even if it's not great, that's nice. You appreciate the meal. But with stuff that's central in your life, duh, annoying. Anyway, get off my, I'll get off my podium. Remember to add a, a whole bunch of emojis before your question if you want to ask me something in the chat stream, guys. Let's, um, if you've got any questions or super chats, please throw them to me now uh, and let's hit, head for the finish line of this stream. Um, how dare you, says human, what legal advice and cultural advice would you give to modern society in order to fix the modern G-E-N-D-E-R problems? Um, I think it's naturally happening. Men are getting sick and tired. Marriage is going downhill. Um, I think just over time, naturally, men are, men are very practical. Men don't need much in relationships, but when they get nothing then it's just like, it's laughable. It's stupid. Your friends are going to laugh at you. Um, men are fine. Okay. Give me at least 20% in the relationship. I'll give you 80. But if she's screaming at you and spitting at you and you're supposed to give 110% all the time and you can never get off that treadmill, um, there's, I just need this much. And then there's, this is completely unfair and insulting. You're treating me like crap. I think it's it's it, it may correct itself. It'll never go back to old times, but uh, men and women in the early two thousands they're in a teething process, and social media has exacerbated it. It it it'll self correct, maybe not to the degree, and it won't look exactly like our grandparents' time, but um, it's going to come to something. Uh, you can see that society wants women wants more out of women. They don't want them sitting at home. They want more work out of them. And women are listening to him. Yeah, I, career is freedom. I don't want to sit at home. Fine. If I had someone who loved me and they wanted me to work and I could just sit at home, writing, drawing, making videos, just doing all the stuff I love doing when I'm not working, man, I, I tell you what, I'd take it. But women are so smart today that they thought freedom was in a cubicle. 
where they'd wake up at 30 and say, oh, where are all the good men? It's like, you're on your own. Healthy Quadrant says a human could taking a good relationship history of a woman be a form of cancel C U L T U R E. Can't even say these words. T to me, it always sounds like them listing the losses and giving me no, re giving me reasons not to be their next partner. Yeah, you have to. When they say you shouldn't judge me, yeah, I, I can. Because I've got standards. It's not like I'm judging you and I'm talking down to you. Judgment is just, I've got standards. And this is what I like. This is what I don't like. I can forgive this, but I can't forgive that. That's judging. That's judgment. That's a discernment. Uh, call it something else, but you can judge. You can discern. You can have a ballpark of what you accept, accept and what you don't. Uh, Severio says, a human, do you, do you sympathize when women talk about their past relationships? To me, it always sounds like them listing their, oh, okay. I just read that. Alzheimer's. I sympathize, uh, depending on how they speak about it. As I said in the video, if you, um, <clears throat> if the person's talking in a very self-reflective way, in an honest way. Not the typical way you, you hear, hear everyone in the media and like, oh, I'm great. They were awful. It's very binary. I, don't, I can't understand. I am so amazing. And everyone around me, I act perfectly. But everyone around me is like an idiot and awful. And it just doesn't make sense. It's like, who are you choosing? Like, at least if there's a bit of a balanced approach, you know, yeah, they were a bad person, but I was blinded by this. And I gave them a chance of this and I've learned this now. And yeah, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done this. That's a bit more balanced. But it's if it's completely a Disney movie where you're the princess and the other person's the wicked witch. No, nah, I don't buy it. I sympathize depending on how they, uh, the context and how they talk about um, their past. But I actually want to know about their past, not because I, I care anything about joe jim or bob in their past but it's because i want to know who they were with them what i want them to describe the dynamic their history of a relationship how they were and how they reflect on it i want to know who they are now because a good predictor of future behavior is past behavior tell me about your past behavior in the context of a relationship so i'm not saying that directly but i'm saying tell me about the past why did it end what did you learn it's kind of for me it's interesting discussion for me it's not offensive and if someone's offended by that, that for me is a good sign. It's like, I can't talk openly to you because I'm, I'm asking you polite questions. I'm not asking for details. Uh, I don't want any de in intimate details. I want to know your thoughts around the subject. You don't have to tell me exactly what happened if it's painful, but tell me vaguely. You know, you can even say, well, things didn't end well, but I noticed that I need this and this and uh, I notice when a guy is like this and this. So don't go into details if you don't want. But I want to know your experience and how you think about relationships based on your history because this is what we're going towards. We're on a date. So I want to know you in that context. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not here just getting to know you as a platonic person. You know, how's the weather and everything. I want to know you in the context of a relationship, a uh, romantic one. So if you don't, you don't want to talk about it, if you want to, this is what's baffling to me. You want to avoid the romantic relationship context while being in that scenario. Good luck. Good luck rolling the dice and winning the lottery on happiness when you don't want to look at anything. To me, it's the only subjects that are interesting. And you talk about it in an interesting way. You're not kind of there serious. Um... I'm not there like a Jordan Peterson with a scowl on my face, kind of talk, talking to Kathy Newman.
Uh, any more questions, guys? Augmented four. He says, women get over their ex from seconds to days. Men go to the, get over their exes from years to decades. That indicates the depth of feeling that women have versus men. Generally, that's what I've sensed as well. Yes, there are exceptions and situations. But generally, you notice that women get on with relationships more. Now, you could say, well, is it a relationship or just getting into bed with someone? When a man gets on with another woman, he's a, he's a low-life pig that's just after one thing. But when a woman gets on with another person, it's like, she's looking for love. She's on Tinder looking for love. No, we've got to call it out for what it is. Alpha Gaming says, I've always wanted a family, but I can't seem to find a woman worth sta starting one with. I find myself getting really bitter. Any advice? I feel sympathy for you guys. I've never wanted family and kids. I would be... I don't think I'd be as level-headed and philosophical if I really wanted kids because time runs out. There's only a window to, to kind of have kids. And if I'd gotten to this point where I really wanted kids and a family and I'd gotten to my age, I would be really pissed that I wanted to be a good dad and pick a good woman. Um, but then again... I would have maybe made slightly different choices because I wasn't really paying. I just paid attention to whether she was a nice person at the start and tried to see if that person would remain, if that person's character is the true one. But most times it wasn't. It was an act at the start. She was trying to impress or whatever. But if I was looking for a mother to my children, the way I would have talked and actually been honest in discerning on a date, like I would have been honest. I said, yeah, I want kids one day. Um, I'm getting older. Um, I don't want to wait long. I want this kind of life. I'd be very specific. But because I don't want marriage and kids, all I'm concerned is with a person's personality and also lifestyle. I'm not going to go out with a woman that's gregarious and sort of she just wants to be out all the time. So I'm going to pay attention to that. So the the really important things in terms of lifestyle that I need and want, that's what I cared about. So mine was like, you know, I, I need someone who's more of an introvert like me. Uh, I, I personality, what we want out of life, values, but also their personality in terms of um, their temperament, like anger, things like that, empathy. But if you want family, that's that's a whole another superstructure over the top that's overrides everything. So I feel sympathy, man. All I can say is you can't lower your standards. I mean, don't don't have your standards in the clouds and be unrealistic like a lot of women, where you're never going to find that person. Because your standards are like you're, you're after, you know, you're after Cleopatra or something. But if you're just, this is the thing, guys just want a nice girl that they find attractive. And it's really hard to find people. Most people are obnoxious. And like I said, women are taught to really resent and be contemptible towards men. So I, I, I sympathize, man. All I can say is don't, don't be too idealistic like you know a lot there's a lot of channels i've talked about that i don't respect they're very kind of dude bro they've got very fixed sort of stances that will make it hard for them to be happy have really normal stances but don't budge from them so if she's got character traits that you know it's not going to be a good wife do not accept her all you can do is keep being sensible and um be that way because you know in yourself if you pull the trigger and pick a, a woman who's got traits that like oh, i'm worried about that yeah i hope it doesn't happen but you really if your friend was dating this person wanting to make her a life would your friend say yeah don't worry about it man or would he say man that's a really big warning sign do not that's going to really end badly for you don't do that wandering wombats thank you very much for the super chat donation i appreciate it Pardon me. Shrek Swamp says, You cannot blame FE Eminism. All this EV, oh, I can't even say the words, we face with women is generally by women themselves in normal female behavior if they are given all clear to behave that way. Yeah, I've always said the women that say um, FE Eminism tricked us, girl power tricked us, it was. Um, 
to me, I don't buy it. It's like you're free to be nice or to throw men under the bus for no reason. You chose to throw men under the bus because that's the way you are as schoolgirls in the schoolyard. You you get off on on making people feel bad, a lot of women. They, they get a giddy joy. And so you're free to treat men nice. You didn't. You enjoy treating them badly. When you're forced to treat men well, like now the times are tougher, now you know it's nice to have a man around or when you need a guy to do something for you or to protect you it's like when you're forced to when you can't naturally just treat someone nicely that says a lot that's why all these guys are like you know you got to train your woman it's like if i can't turn my back on her and trust her not to not to complain about me to her girlfriends not to defend me like i wanted to defend me behind my back i wanted to to be proud and happy to be with me train her Keep her on a leash all the time. The the dude bros that say that, it's like, good luck, man. And then when when all of a sudden, when you can't have a leash on her, if you lose your job, um, or if someone else with a, a better leash comes along, a better master, yeah. Live the life you want, man. I, I just kind of know what I can and can't accept. Nope, nope says, how do you tell your family you don't want to be married? I'm 25 and my family immigrated to get me to the great position I'm in. I want to find a way to respectfully decline. That's a tough one, I know, because you want to be grateful your, your family treated you well, but also that's kind of like blackmail. Your life is our life. For me, it's like if someone loves and cares for you, it's not so they can use you as a tool. To, like you see um, parents, they couldn't become a football star. And so they put their child through hell to become a football star. And their child uh, doesn't really have a free and good life. The parents are living through their children. I would just try. You, your sentence is um, asked respectfully, like you asked me. Well written, well spoken, respectful. Just tell them. If they care about you, say it in a really nice way. Mom, dad, you know I love you, but I can't. I, I really don't know if I'm ever going to marry. I don't, or I don't want to be married. I just don't. Um, and tell them why. No, know exactly how to answer the question. That's a big thing. I knew that a lot of the questions that I was nervous about asking, whether in front of a girlfriend, my family, in general public, you know, why aren't you married? Do you want kids? Like a lot of the big ones that you're going to be confronted by that you find they're personal, but nervous, learn how to answer them in a, in, in various ways that you're proud of answering, you've got the words, um, you can articulate them well. And then if you can do them in the nicest way where you're just being honest about how you feel and they want to attack you for it, then you know how to respond to that and say things like, look, that's not fair. This is how I feel about the thing. This is my life and I love and respect you, but then you're asking me to do something I don't want to do. I'm unhappy and I may be miserable, and I'm going to blame you my whole life because I'm unhappy because I did what you wanted. Don't you want me to get married because I dearly want to? Until I want to get married, can you be okay with me just saying I'm not marrying? And I may never marry, but if I do one day in the future, I'll let you know. Learn how to express the things. you Don't, don't sort of stand there Try to find the words, man. Write them down. Memorize sentences to rebut the interrogating kind of thing. Like if people are going to interrogate you with really touchy subjects that mean a lot to you. Like if a woman says, oh, where's this relationship going? Know how to answer it. When she's becoming selfish, she says something. Like all these different scenarios we talk about. Know how to stand up for yourself. Hey, I'm in this relationship too. There's two of us here. Why doesn't my opinion count? Are we only doing what you want? Is this just your relationship or is it mine? Do I get a say? Know how to answer everything when you're, because they're rudely pushing you in the corner, standing over you and saying, do what I want because I'm intimidating you. 
stand up from that corner and be over them and saying, don't intimidate me. I'm not doing it to you. I'm not pushing you in a corner. I exist here as well. Learn to express the words. Uh, I see Fubar says, where do you think the divide comes generationally between modern and old school women? Probably 19, 1960s to 70s. That's when the split started to happen in a big way between the boomers and Gen X and Gen X and the millennials. And also the uh, 2006 to 8 uh, Facebook and then beyond that social media. And now it's kind of, it's progress. So, so there's landmark moments like Facebook. And then after that, it was like, just bang, 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 you know, so everyone started living online. But um, generationally, yeah, I would say 1970s, definitely. And I think the big change where everyone just kind of um, got really free, I think it was the, the end of the 80s and early 90s. It just kind of ramped up and it's never... It's never gone back. The last remnants, like you look in the movies like Rambo and the old masculine kind of movies and stuff, like they've they were the, like the last things remaining between men and women, women, women knowing their place and us being comfortable cooperating that way. Like you're a woman, you're over here. I'm a guy, I'm over here. We can dance together and cooperate. Then after that, late eighties to early nineties, it was like no, no, we're the same. We work together. We argue. We're competitive together. Uh, we're trying to intrude in your sports. You're trying to like, and now it's even worse. Now you've got sort of guys in MMA, MMA putting on a dress, calling themselves women and putting through women through walls. Yeah, it's a weird world. Uh, some of these questions, guys, I haven't. Um, Ricky says, have you watched Marrying Mexusa? No, I haven't. So I can't answer the question. <laughs> California Eagle. I've got a dog and she's female. Should I leave her? No. David. Yeah. Um, he says, if a woman threatens to leave, if I don't do something, I'll hold the do door open for her. Yeah. Happened to me once in my late 20s where she threatened something. I just, she said, well, get out or something. And I just grabbed my bag and I started to go and she ran to the door and she blocked it. And she was amazed. She goes, I can't believe you're actually going to leave. I don't get those situations. You gave me an ultimatum and I chose something. Don't. There's worst chess players in history. What do you think the best movies? Stay here with a nagging, screaming, irrational child or leave where I can't get a word in. Of course I'm going to leave. I can't believe. I can. Describe the scenario to anyone out there on the street and and uh, I bet you most of them will agree with me. Or see absolutely nothing wrong with what I did. A feral android, thank you very much for the super chat donation. Was talking with what I thought was an amazing woman, but the few times we had conflict, she would ghost me for a month. Seems many women can't handle working on conflict and would rather run away. Yeah, one of my good friends, his fiance uh, exhibited those character traits before he engaged with her. When they'd have an argument, she'd ghost him for weeks or months and then come back. And he told her he's not accepting it. And she just kept doing it over and over again. And um, now that she's engaged, she hasn't done it yet for the last year and a half. But I keep saying, well, it's maybe because you're engaged you you put in a ring on her finger so she kind of knows she has to hold her breath until she uh, until the wedding day
All right, um, we've been going for an hour and a half. All right, guys, last questions, last super chats, and we'll call it a day. So I'll go through the remaining questions now. Hit the thumbs up, guys. Hit the like button. Helps me out. Yeah, nearly Christmas here in Australia. And everywhere else, I suppose. Brad says you'd go back to the 50s. Look, I was kind of raised where I thought I'd probably get married because that was just the thing to do. But I thought much like what I saw in the past, I talked to family, friends, relatives, what I saw in movies, what I read of culture, what everyone told me was that men and women treat each other very differently and I saw them treating each other differently. But when I started dating, it was very, very different. None of them resembled anything I saw in my family, the way people treated each other, the good relationships I saw. And I always thought, I'll probably get married one day when I was younger, but not because I wanted to, because it's just the thing you do. It's kind of like when you're young and you think, well, one day I'm going to have a job and I'm going to have a home. I'm going to live on my own and blah, blah, blah. I'll probably drive a car and whatever. So by the time I started to actually assess the quality of women out there and whether I actually want that lifestyle, and it's like, I can't see myself as a father. I'll have to do all this. I can't just quit my job if I have a kid. Um, so, yeah. Well, thankfully, I, I, I'd say in some, thankfully or not, uh, women today, it's very hard to find a good woman. So by the time I realized I didn't actually want to be a father or have kids, I avoided a lot of traps. And also, uh, just the, I found my idea of like, I, I don't want to be like, you see the fathers today, like when they're out, they're, they're more mothers than the mothers. Uh, they're more compassionate and they treat their kids better. Uh, I see a lot of the, the fathers are carrying their kids around everywhere, pushing shopping trolleys, holding shopping. It's kind of like it's her world. They're playing dollhouse with a woman's world of family and kids. Whereas I always saw... Uh, me as being like the protector on the outside and I'm involved with the kids and I'm part of the family, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not sort of, you know, feeding the kids, like getting up in the middle of the night with a bottle and, uh, changing diapers. Like if I was going to be a father, I'm not doing that because my father never did that. And my mother and father were fine with that separation. They loved each other and they knew each other's role and what each other wanted to do and what didn't, didn't want to do. I don't want to change diapers. I always felt like it may be nice having a kid because everyone says it's going to be good, but I don't really want a kid. And if women are pushing for the kids, then you take responsibility for that, especially the stuff I don't want to do because you're the one that really pushed for it. Don't say you really, really want a kid, but then you hand over all the stuff you don't want to do to me or whenever you feel like it. I'm not your puppet to do to be a dad when you feel like it, but I have no say in how you're, you're a mother. So... My ideas of how I would have been a father if I ever wanted to be a dad when I was younger. This is before I knew I didn't want to when I got older in my 20s. It's very different. So the environment today is just like, it was a no-brainer. It's like, of course I don't want to marry and have kids, especially with the quality of women out there and how they treat men, what they expect, what they don't want to do and how lazy women are uh, and how much they don't like guys. Well, like, why, would I, why do I want to hang around someone and have your kids see two people that hate each other? What are the chances of that kid growing up wanting to recreate that crappy household? So just everything just pointed to no, no, no. Everything about me, everything about the environment. Anel says, human, a meme I saw today said no. So apparently every girl's ex was toxic or abusive and she was perfect this is always the case uh they're angels and the man was the bad guy mm. 
I said a few words in your statement that probably you'll get this video. I'm just tired of having to pay attention to my words. Like in people so... So sensitive. Uh, Rinsler, thank you very much for the super chat donation. He says, next time a woman tells me she wants to be my partner for life, I'll tell her. You know that line till death do us part yeah okay the only way you'll leave me is in a body bag still want to be with me <laughs> yeah we'll get married like vikings do if i pass away you're burned alive with me in a in a boat Anel says, I think women are wired to move on quickly because they know their biological clock is ticking. Yeah, that too. But if, like, a, a lot of women, they ignore the biological clock. This is, this is the irresponsibility. If you party right until your early 30s where 90% of your eggs are gone, you've only got 10% of your eggs left, and even then you say, yeah, I'll wait till my mid-30s, when the, when the lights are coming on in the nightclub and you have to go home and you're scrambling to find someone, that's what women are doing. And they're pretending they spent the whole night looking for the one. They didn't. They were partying. They were dancing. They were having fun. Admit it. I know it's not nice to admit and eat that crap sandwich. But if, you're, if it was your bad, if you made a mistake, admit it, man. People respect you much more. I much respect a woman who admits the mistake she made. I may be able to forgive some of them. She doesn't know my standards rather than lying to me about things I may have forgiven her for if she was honest. But if she keeps lying about everything, just everything, all, all the lies added onto each other just makes it a complete no for me. Mark says, uh, with social media showing men how to how women began to feel lonely during 2020-21, but still acting the same on it, do you see men exiting big time social media platforms? Possibly. I see some guys. Uh, basically, women, women are in a corner now. They have to dig themselves out of this hole they created when times were great, where they could act any way they wanted and they had no repercussions. Now, it's uh, it is a desert out there and it's getting more so it's not green and flourishing like it used to be it's not a candy store anymore the shelves are emptier and emptier i think women have to really mature in their own groups they can't act like um, schoolgirls anymore or a lot less than they have been Just the guy says, not wanting long-term relationships is not is not synonymous with being promiscuous. A uh, common mistake people make. Yeah, I never said like I'm talking general generally about the people who just kind of their life is just about hooking up on Tinder, things like that. Just the uh, spinning people, uh, just freely dating and sleeping with people. You could be someone that's more discerning and saying, you know, uh, I don't want a serious relationship, but I want to have a part-time lover. Um, I, I want to have relationships every, every now and then. You've, you've just only got so much space for them in your life, but you don't want to you know, eat relationship junk food every week that everyone else is engaging in. All right, guys, any last questions? Yeah, hit the, uh, hit the like button uh, for the algorithm, guys.
marketing definition says, first look inside. The outside is the statement of mind you are. Yeah, what's a, what's a saying? It says, you don't, you, you don't get the girl you want. You get, the, you get who you are. Something like that. You don't get what you want. You get who you are. Digital Strawberry says, oh, what do you think relationships would be like if emotional regulation techniques to cultivate peace and bliss were taught in schools like the Buddhist monks and nuns long term? That's a fairy tale world, especially in the capitalist West that's heavily predicated on marketing and lying and manipulation. It'd be nicer, but we probably wouldn't have iPhones. Um, so there's good things that come out of it, but yeah, what it, it'd, be, it'd be a nicer, more compassionate world. Yeah. Guys, stop lying, uh, not lying. Stop um, fighting in the comment section, please. Let it go. Jean Antoine says, my ex used, used that phrase, there's two of us in a relationship, it's not all about you, all the time in a very aggressive and manipulative way, expecting me to comply 100% with her. Tantrums and, tantrums and ult ultimatums. Yeah, but you should be able to civilly say, yeah, I exist here too. What's fair? What's the argument about? Let's... um. I don't like the word compromise, but if you need to use it, let's fairly compromise. Let's realistically um, come to some kind of agreement. It can't be all your way. It can't be all my way. Sometimes it should be all the other person's way. You need to concede if the issue is about them. I said before, if you're, if you're both going to buy a car, but the car's hers, it's mainly hers, and you get to drive it every now and then, she gets the final say. You can give your input. But you need to be realistic about these things. Just a guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Boffin actually says, uh, join humans Discord server. Lots, lots of guys to talk to. Yeah, for you guys who have a microphone and um, know how to use Discord, click on the link below this video and in my about section, uh, join my Discord server. And, and sometimes we have guys just hanging out there and chatting. So um, I drop in every now and then, especially if I can see people hanging out. And um, uh, you guys can have a real-time conversation with a few of us. Just the guy says, it's much better start a romantic relationship having other options and all the main aspects of your life sorted out. I don't know what you mean by that. It's much better to start a romantic relationship having other options and all the main aspects sorted out. Yeah, but at the same, at the same time, you can't sort of be serious with a couple of women you, at some point you have to pull the trigger and um at least i've always found that i can't i can't split my focus and spend so much time with women i have too many other things i enjoy doing so that's also why i want one i, I prefer one stable woman in my life rather than juggling multiple women that's fun as a short-term holiday like in between girlfriends or when you need a release and you're single, it's kind of like you have fun for a little while. But to, to do it as a lifestyle, it's just a waste. You're throwing years away and you're getting nothing. You're just emptying yourself. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Chris. Chris, namaste. Uh, he says, thanks for the discussion, human, and advocating for integrity. Thanks for the comment and the donation. Um, I, I think with guys, the, the only way through all this kind of stuff, relationally with women especially, is uh, your own moral philosophy and your ethical stance on things. 
know what you want to say, stand up for yourself. Uh, when you want to say no, say no respectfully. If you want to say, let me think about it, you need time, say that. It's basically kind of um, um, mentally and intellectually just knowing how to, not to be pushed around anymore and to be proud of uh, being able to speak and stand up for yourself. Let's face it. One, one thing I feel secure in is there's not many women I'm going to go out with that can speak like this and know how to stand up for themselves. And it, it makes you feel kind of safer. Like, it's not that I want to be intimidating. It's like, I'll be nice, but don't cross my boundaries and don't be pushy. Davina says, a human, are you going to record for other platforms? Um, all my YouTube stuff is also um, mirrored on BitChute and Odyssey as well. I used to uh, upload podcasts as well through anchor i haven't done that for a while i might continue to do that that's another there's so many platforms every time i upload a video i also sort of you know i post it to my patrons i um i also uh, put it up on instagram just to let people know to go and watch the video here i put it on my community tab there's just so many and it's just me i'm a one-man show so i don't want to multiply uh too many outlets taking time away from actually producing more and more videos for you, which is what everyone wants. It's just the amount of time I have. Um, so mainly those platforms. I haven't really heard too many people wanting me to, and I didn't get a big really uh, a response or a following with my podcast. So I kind of said in terms of like um, spending my time effectively, I kind of... um. I've gotten lazy with converting my videos to MP3s and uploading them as a podcast. Getting past bedtime. Yeah, it might, must be getting late for people in the US. Um, it might be a good time to end this unless any of you guys have any extra questions. Sorry to anyone who... There was a, someone last week that left a super chat just as I ended the stream because I've got a 20 second delay. When I end it here, you don't see me ending ending it for another 20 seconds. So I think someone sent me a super chat with a question. I feel really bad about that. So um, let me know who that was. I can't remember. And for any of you guys who want to continue to um, chat, like Boffin says, join my Discord server. And um, after this live stream, I'll, I'll pop in and see who's there. If no one's there, I'll leave in five minutes. <laughs> but um, it's a great place. Like um, even between you guys there, you guys want to get together and chat. It's a great place, like-minded guys, if you want to talk about this sort of stuff and be polite and civil. Because like if you go there and start spurging out and posting stuff that's inappropriate, um, then you get booted off. Um, Discord doesn't like that, just like YouTube or any other platform doesn't like it as well. And we have to monitor it too. So as long as you want to have a, a civil discussion, you want to have conversations like this, you want to just talk normally. Uh, with There's usually a couple of older guys there too. Feel free. Uh, click on the Discord link and join the server. You might want to look on YouTube how to set up your push to talk. That's a very important thing. It's basically when you set up your mic to go there, you pick a button on your keyboard to press. Whenever you press that, you can talk into your microphone. When you take your finger off, then it's muted. So just uh, maybe look at a very short how-to video of um, talking on Discord and setting up your mic. Anyway, it was a pleasure, guys and gals. I will um, see you in the next video. And please keep the comments coming under the videos. Like I said, my point of view is my video. We discuss it further on these live streams, but the comments underneath from different points of view from people, uh, they're much appreciated. It's really great to see other people with different experiences talking about the same subject because I've only got my perspective and my life experience. You guys on the same subject have, might have really, really great perspectives simply because it didn't occur to me or I've never lived it. So keep the comments coming, guys, um, and I will see you
in the next video. Bye.